It is Thursday, June 1st. Today, Instagram Inception. Why one brand runs multiple accounts on the same platform. Also, will API fees kill off your third-party marketing tool? Be Real is adding messaging. Agencies finally accept their cookie fate and more. I'm Todd Maffin. That's ahead today in digital marketing. If you think managing one Instagram page is a feat, how about managing five different accounts for a single brand? That is the social strategy behind Gooder, a sunglass brand which has five different Instagram accounts, each with its own aesthetic, and each targeting a different audience. In this case, a different sport, like running or golfing. Marketing Brew has a great piece up on it today, talking about how each account is headed by its own dedicated community manager. These managers not only focus on boosting engagement, but also work closely with the brand's marketing efforts to maintain a cohesive presence across the platform. The company's CMO said that engagement is the most critical metric for them, and each account has specific benchmarks. While the main Gooder page has the highest follower count at 200,000, the other accounts also have not bad followings. The follower counts of those individual pages range from about 8,000 to 35,000. On top of running Instagram accounts, page managers have other job requirements, such as contributing insights to product development, proposing brand partnerships with athletes, copywriting, and engaging with the brand's 350 ambassadors in a dedicated Slack community. Community managers also collaborate with Gooder's paid media team to determine suitable events and content for ads. The brand runs paid campaigns throughout the year on several platforms like Google, Meta, Podcasts, and Radio. Each campaign is tailored to target specific sports like cycling or running. Well, preparing for a cookie-less future is inevitable at this point, but a new report published by Accenture yesterday found that many advertisers have yet to update their strategies in response to the shifting data landscape. According to the survey, nearly half of U.S. and U.K. advertisers have been using the same approach for the past five years, and 70% of them have no plans to change their strategy in the coming year. The report also found that the overwhelming majority of advertisers don't fully understand the impact of evolving data privacy changes, and many are simply unaware of the changes entirely or the alternatives. But digital platforms are developing solutions to meet these needs, like Pinterest. The report noted that the social platform already offers non-third-party data alternatives that deliver similar performance. Quoting Accenture, We found that globally... Advertisers on Pinterest using strategies that don't rely on third-party identifiers, like interest and keyword targeting, run no risk to their return on ad spend or conversion rates when compared with retargeting alone, unquote. The report also suggests several recommendations for advertisers in a post-cookie world, including centralizing in-house data, experimenting with new audience-based solutions that don't require third-party tracking, personalizing outreach with generative AI, and creator partnerships. It seems that Reddit might be joining Twitter in pricing out apps. The creator of the popular iOS Reddit client Apollo reported yesterday that the company's new API pricing might put him out of business unless he can come up with $20 million. While Reddit has not publicly disclosed the pricing details of its new plans, the developer learned in a call with its team that the new pricing will cost $12,000 $12,000 per 50 million requests, and Apollo made 7 billion requests last month. APIs, of course, are the back ends through which third-party tools can use this site. They do everything from consumer-facing stuff like Apollo to posting content like Postpone to monitoring brand mentions like Wario. Many of these apps have sent out messages to their customers basically saying, yeah, we don't know either, but if Reddit insists on this, we might have to close up shop. Elon Musk successfully iced out almost all reader apps from the picture by charging crazy amounts for the API. Even big social media platforms like Agora Pulse have told customers to expect changes to pricing or service. TechCrunch reported today that with these new Reddit API changes, the platform is looking to monetize its data by charging developers who earn from making apps around it. Reddit maintains, though, that its goal is not to shut down third-party clients. Be Real has entered the chat, literally. The app is developing a DM feature called Real Chat, which it will test among users in Ireland. 
With Real Chat, users will be able to have one-on-one conversations with their friends, send them private messages, including front-back photos without time limits, and react with real emojis. Users can only message each other if they are already friends on the app, and the chat will include blocking and reporting features. Users can also delete their own messages, but those deletions will not remove content from their friends' apps. Be Real says if both participants in the chat delete the messages, the content will be permanently erased from the system within 30 days. Be Real still does not have any ads or paid features. Sometimes it seems like the marketing tools we all use are a confusing spaghetti of various platforms, sometimes patched together, sometimes just out on their own. Here's a better way. Brevo. You might remember it as Send in Blue. Brevo's platform gives you a single, unified view of your customers' journeys in one easy-to-use platform that brings together everything you need. Email, SMS, chat, marketing automation, even WhatsApp and meetings. And it's affordable. You don't pay just to have contacts stored in the database. You only pay for marketing emails you've sent. That's why more than 500,000 businesses across 180 countries, including Louis Vuitton, eBay, and Michelin, trust Brevo and its more than 75 integrations. Get started with Brevo for free by going to brevo.com slash digital and use the promo code digital to save 50% on your first three months of the starter and business plan brevo.com slash digital and sign up free. I am particular about the sound of this podcast. I used to be a national public radio producer, so it's kind of in the blood. When we first launched the show, I was just using Zoom calls for our interviews. And honestly, it sounded like it. Bad audio, dropouts, you know. You haven't heard bad audio from our interviews for a while now. And that's because we switched to riverside.fm. Riverside records locally for each person. And just seconds after we say goodbye to our guest, we can export the conversation as high-quality, separate tracks. You don't have to download anything. Neither does your guest. You just send them a link. They've also got video recording, easy clips for social media, and automatic transcriptions. Use the code TODAY to get 15% off any individual plan. Go to riverside.fm and click Get Started. You can try it out without a credit card. That's riverside.fm and use the code TODAY when you are ready to upgrade. Agencies are still feeling out who they think the winners and losers will be as the death of the third-party cookie nears. But according to a survey published by Digiday Today, they're doing so with a less pessimistic outlook. The survey found that among the three major tech companies, Apple is expected to emerge as the winner in the wake of the cookie apocalypse, followed by Google, Meta, anticipated to be a loser in that overall scheme. Notably, the survey revealed a significant decrease in extreme pessimism among agencies from Q3 2022 to Q2 2023 regarding the end of third-party tracking. For instance, last year, nearly half of agency professionals expected Meta to suffer greatly, but the percentage dropped to a quarter in the latest survey. Similar shifts were observed for Google and Apple. Among the groups that will be affected, rather than specific companies, the survey found that agencies don't really see an overall winner in the cookie-less world. According to agencies, the race for who will lose is much closer. Vendors are expected to face the greatest loss, as indicated by two-thirds of agency professionals who said that group would experience significant setbacks. But we advertisers are not far behind. More than 60% of agency pros says that group will lose, followed closely by publishers. Interesting, agencies say they think they'll lose the least. And finally, LinkedIn has released a new guide on emerging software as a service market trends, which looks at how SaaS providers can optimize their marketing campaigns. First, the report acknowledges the recent downturn in the SaaS market and highlights how it has influenced marketing teams' approaches. It says the focus has shifted from acquiring new customers to ensuring long-term viability and expanding existing client work. The report suggests that vendors can benefit from broadening their marketing approach beyond customer acquisition. The guide also explores LinkedIn's potential, of course, as a platform for reaching founders and decision makers. It provides some specific notes on the role that LinkedIn can play in the connection and promotion process, along with recommendations on different ad types you can use. As Social Media Today points out, the main message is that SaaS providers should reallocate their marketing budget to building their brand 
engaging with existing customers through content marketing, and focusing on upselling and cross-selling to maximize opportunities. The report goes into more depth, of course. If you are a SaaS provider, it might be worth taking a look. A link to download the report is available in today's premium newsletter, or you can search Winning in the New Age of SaaS. Heading down to the U.S. tomorrow for the first time in in a while. We have a new client that we are onboarding. Looking forward to getting them started. So that is a trip for me into the U.S., which means still show tomorrow. Our associate producer, the intrepid Steph Gunn, will be in the hosting chair. And that will do it for the week. Today in Digital Marketing is produced by Engage Q Digital on the traditional territories of this dynamic First Nation on Vancouver Island. Our associate producer is Steph Gunn, production coordinator Sarah Guild, music licensing by Source Audio, ad coordination by Red Circle. And you know, not many people know this, but our theme composer, Mark Blevis, was one of the very first Amazon dropship marketers. It's true. He started selling out these cool little book reader things, but then he made the mistake of over-diversification. By the end of his first year, he was a mess running around the warehouse screaming, we got to install microwave ovens, custom kitchen deliveries. We got to move these refrigerators. We got to move these color TVs. I'm Todd Naffin. Steph will be with you tomorrow. I will see you on Monday. Have a restful weekend, friends. Thanks for listening. See you then.